Hello and welcome to the show. Well, I hope you enjoyed that opening. I almost missed my cue because it was just so upbeat. Thank you, Willie. Thank you, Tiana. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you, team. I tell you what, I am so grateful to be back. This is 2023, new beginnings. Can you imagine? I want to welcome everybody to the show. Um, I don't know about you, but this is the beginning of the year, and I am excited about new beginnings and what's happening in 2023. Yeah, you all know, you heard it, had COVID and all that, and so now I'm back on track. Just getting back yesterday, just tested negative yesterday, and just hit the, hit the ground running. Of course, my brother Chucky says, don't run too fast, sis, because you got to slow down. So I still have to rest. And yeah, they're shaking their head behind the scenes. I got you. And backstage, I still have to rest. And so anyway, I want to welcome you to the show. We got a great show planned for you. This year, as I said, it's all about new beginnings. And this week's guest is Miss Michelle Alexander. And so we're going to be talking about resetting your finances for 2023. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy, because it's coming up next. The Cecil Williams South Carolina Civil Rights Museum is the Palmetto State's first and only museum. It honors a generation of people, black and white, throughout the state of South Carolina who deserve to be remembered for their unselfish commitments and sacrifices. Enjoy an immersive and entertaining virtual tour. For more information, visit www.cecilwilliams.com. Welcome back to the show. Well, I told you, we've got a great show planned for you this year um, on Tammy. It's all about new beginnings. And so, as you see, we've got a new opening. And of course, you're going to see the new closing. And and um, when I tell you I'm excited, I am excited. I'm glad to be back on the air. We've missed two things. But hey, life goes on. This is season number four. And this is our episode, our first episode for the year. And so, again, I want to welcome you to the show. Well, as I said, she is not a stranger to the Tammy show. Um, I call her the, the financier <laughs> of, of all financiers um, about budgets. I mean, she has her own talk show, you know, and, and Michelle, talk with Mimi. I think I got it right but she's going to correct me if I'm wrong, comes on YouTube. And so you're going to see her. Michelle has done so much work and she does this work um, unselfishly. And so I wanted to make sure that the first show always, the beginning of the year is with Michelle Alexander. And she is our budget person, our financier for the, for the Tammy show. And, you know, they have contributors, so we have her as our contributor. So without further ado, want to introduce you to some and to others who don't, who may already know her, Miss Michelle Alexander. Come on out, Michelle. Hi, Tammy. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you for being on the show. Finance expert, owner of AJM Financial LLC. Thank you so much for being on the show. Anytime. And congratulations on four years. I am so, so proud of you. This is that's you. awesome. That was awesome to hear. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is season number four. And so we we rocking and rolling. Yeah. So, you know, Michelle, I always have you coming on the show to talk about budgeting and mm -hmm. and to really give us what we need for resetting our finances. My first thing I want to ask you about, I want to say Happy New Year, but I also want to find out what are your plans for the new year? Wow, uh, that's a loaded one for me because uh, some things have changed for me, but um, one of the main things I want to do is focus on what I want for myself financially. And I think I kind of missed some of that through the pandemic and, you know, through the life changes that, you know, had happened. So I needed to focus on that. So I'm sitting down and doing what I'm going to talk about tonight mm -hmm. and, you know, to get some things together and prepare for my future as well as I'm telling everyone else to prepare for theirs. Because even That's when you have things correct a certain way, you know, there's still another level to go. That's so, right. You know, that's I need right. to move to those next levels. And that's something that I really needed to focus on and think about and ready that's to do in 2023. Wow. That sounds amazing. So what are the, the main things that we need to focus on with finances at the beginning of the year? Well, one of the things and 
part of this is from one of the shows. It is AJ and Financial Tuesday Talks with Mimi on YouTube. Um, but one of the things I did talk about for SMART Goals for 2023 is to start early. It's still January. And what happens with a lot of people is that they fall off the wagon by this date. What are we, the 19th? Every, mm -hmm. you know, they fall off the wagon somewhere around the 15th. But I say keep going. You know, it's the best time to start your financial goals. Last year is gone. This year is coming. And we're here. But one of the things you want to do is be smart about it. And I know you hear that all the time. We've, we've strangled smart to death. But it is a very good tool to use. So I tell people to start simple, especially with the saving part. Let's use $600. I want to save $600 by the end of the year very specific. It's measurable. It's attainable. It's relevant to you for whatever reason you said that you need to save that $600 and it's time bound. You're giving yourself a year. To me, that's easy because you're breaking down that $600 by monthly payments of 50. And for whatever reason, if you can't do 50, then break it in half. Maybe you do 25, but you're starting somewhere. So when people ask me, how do I start an emergency fund? How do I start a rainy day fund? This is how. It's really that simple. I had a friend tell me um, uh, last month, and it's amazing when she said that to me because she does watch you know, the YouTube channel, is that, and she's a chemist. So I know she's, she's smart. But she says, I am not that finance person. I don't know all the jar, you know, all the terms and maybe this and maybe that. But I like how you break it down for me. And that made me really happy to know that's my that's my goal. That's what I start out with as my intro without a bunch of jargon. I want you to know that you can do this. This is not hard. If you can find fifty dollars and I know you can, whoever you are, because there's I'm quite sure there's something in that budget, in that list that you can cut down on. We won't go through all the little specifics because we know people don't want to touch the hair. They don't want to touch the nails. They don't want to touch this. But I do my own nails. Mm -hmm. Because to share this story from a long time ago, when I decided to go back to school to get my finance degree, mm -hmm. I needed to have a laptop to be mobile. Right? I travel for work sometimes. And I was determined not to have that debt carry on. I knew I was going to charge it, but I wanted to be able to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So leading up to the time before I even started, I think I had already either applied and signed up. I decided to pay myself mm. first. So these are the things that I did. Some people find the story funny. I did my own nails. I paid me the same money I would have paid at the salon. Oh. I didn't nick myself. Mm -hmm. I gave myself a tip. <laughs> Can't make your fingers bleed. You can't do any of that. Give myself a tip, right? Uh huh. I would wash my car. It, it was a, I had a small car, a compact car at that time. I would wash my car. And when I, I finished, I paid myself. Mm. So all those services that I was getting done, I decided to transfer to me. And the same thing with my hair. Not this one. But my <laughs> Not this one, but my hair. I do that. I do. I do everything myself, and I would pay myself. Mm -hmm. So that allowed me to save that money to be able mm -hmm. to pay for that laptop. And so by the time I got there, something mm -hmm. else came through a little couple of hundred dollars. I was able to pay for that laptop without carrying debt. Wow, I love that. Now you know, because that was my next question. Some tips on saving and and budgeting. But that's a great idea. Just like I said with my hair now. You know, I have to go get it cut, but I do the color and, and all of that. And, and of course, Paula Payton, you've seen her, the stylist, she helps as well. Yes. And, and so paying yourself for the services that you would normally pay somebody else for. I mean, that's a great saving tip. When we talk about budgeting, mm -hmm. that's always a hard line because people say, well, how do I start a budget? What do you say is the first thing that you need to do to start that budget? Do you sit down, write it down? What is your, what's your advice? Okay. That's another loaded one. And I say that because <laughs> one of the second things I talked about was changing your attitude. Mm -hmm. If you look at preparing for your financial future as a burden, then that's exactly what it'll be. So most people, that's where I tend to get stuck with folks. I, when we get to that budget part, they're all excited in the beginning, get their credit, they want to check everything and blah, blah, blah. But when you get to that budget, um, can we reschedule? Can we get to the next week? Can we do whatever? Because what I'm thinking in my mind for a lot of people is they don't want to face the reality because they know what's coming. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, she going to cut this. She going to cut that. She going to cut this. She going to tell me about something. And I don't want to do this right now because mm-hmm. we'd rather hold on what's comfortable and what makes us happy. Like, you know, having that extra, I get Smoothie King every day, or I do get my nails done because I work hard. I keep telling people I'd rather work hard at saving my money so I don't have to be in a situation that's terrible later on because mm-hmm. you can get your nails done and feel great. I do mine and I feel great when I'm finished because, again, I'm not nicking myself. I don't do them at 10 o'clock at night. So they're pressed down in the morning. You do what you have to do. So in, in doing that, you are paying yourself now. You're starting that budget. You're going through so you can get where you need to be, because as you know, any of us can lose our job. Mm-hmm. Any of us can get sick and be out of work for a long period of time. And when you look back and think about, did I really need to do that? I could have done my nails. That's Mm -hmm. the least you can do. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult. Maybe every once in a while you go get a touch up or something like that. But I can't justify with with things the way they are today. All the um, prices have increased on increased on everything from food to utilities to you know, wherever you live, something has gone up. So I can't justify paying somebody $90 to put my fingers under a light that could cause me cancer. That's just how I see it. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. that $90 is your internet bill if you need that to stay focused with your job. You may be on Zoom. You want to work from home. Exactly. You may need that $90 to put gas in your car because you have to get back to work and there was an emergency that came up. It's mm-hmm. something that that money could be used for that will make sense when you actually need it. And it's not there. Yeah. So I tell people to change your attitude. Look at your actions as if you're learning a new dance. You get out on the floor, <laughs> learn how to do that dance. You're watching the person next to you in front of you, the instructor, and you get out there. You keep doing it until you get it right. It's the same thing about budgeting. Wow. Keep working on that and do it till you get it right. So I tell people it's simple. Sit down with a piece of paper and pen, because you know I say it all the time on your show, pen and paper never crash. That's See, right. Tell me about your computer broke, it froze, and <laughs> I can't get to one. I can't get to the library. I can't afford one. But I know the dollar and a quarter tree has paper, pencils, and pens. <laughs> That's so right. <laughs> and start writing. Mm-hmm, the first mm-hmm. thing you're going to do is put down what you bring home. It's just your net pay. That's all you can work with. I don't understand people talking about, oh, I'm going to put my gross down and then subtract all that stuff out. Why? Your paycheck does it for you. Just write down the net pay. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you're just going to list your expenses. And I mean everything. You have to be honest with yourself. Don't leave out stuff. That's what people tend to do because they're afraid of something or afraid or they don't want to know you to know how bad things really are. Whoever you're speaking to, me or someone else, they can't help you fully unless they can know the whole story. Story. Mm -hmm. If you have kids and they have activities, list that down because you're paying for that. That's right. And, you know, one of the things that I love the way you say it is when we work with you, it's confidential. And you say there's no judgment. Now, a lot of times when you go to some some financiers, they are like, oh, you could have done this different. You could have done that. You could have made this. And oh, wow, you got that. But with you working with you, there's no judgment. You know, Michelle, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back. And when we come back, we're going to go to the second half and kind of talk about your show as well as credit scores. And and you already talked about emergency and talk about this inflation and what you want us to do. Okay. We'll be right back. The Cecil Williams South Carolina Civil Rights Museum is the Palmetto State's first and only museum. It honors a generation of people, black and white, throughout the state of South Carolina who deserve to be remembered for their unselfish commitments and sacrifices. Enjoy an immersive and entertaining virtual tour. For more information, visit www.cecilwilliams.com. Welcome back to the show where we have Michelle Alexander. She is the uh, finance expert here on the Tammy Show, and she's the owner of AJM Financial LLC, as well as AJM Financial Talk with Mimi. And you can check that out on YouTube. Michelle, thank you so much again for joining the show. You know, we're at the second half of the show. And um, my question and the question that we have um, is about buy now, pay later apps. How do they affect your credit? And what, what advice do you have? Oh, 
I, I keep saying it's loaded because you just keep loading them on with this one. <laughs> that's something that always bothered me. Buy now, pay later is not like the, the I want to say the olden days almost, but back in the day when you used to have layaway. Mm-hmm. That the detriment of us was these things that these financial so-called financial products that have come along with this. Now, buying now and paying later, I'm not sure exactly how it would affect your credit score. And other than the sense that if you bought now and you couldn't pay later, because now you have an outstanding debt that you can't pay and it shows up on your credit report. Mm -hmm. My mindset is that if you can't afford to pay cash for it, mm -hmm. you can't buy it. That's okay. right. Okay. That's exactly what I did with that la laptop. Mm -hmm. I didn't come out of pocket at that time with the money to get that, but I saved up for it. So when I was able to purchase it, all I had to do was just pay the bill when it came. And that's the same thing. Even if, whatever you want to buy now, you can buy it. You can save up for it, but you just buy it later and you have it and it's yours. Because if you buy now and pay later, it's really not yours. Yeah, that now that that right there, I like that. And you know, there's the other apps. What do you think about the apps? Like, and and I'm not advertising anybody. I'm just talking and asking about Rocket Money. You know, these budgeting apps. What do you think about those apps? You know what? I'm not the digital person when it comes to a lot of things. I'm really not. I I can be very you know back in the day about it, but I mm -hmm. don't have total. You know, like I'm totally against that. If it works for you and I see that it's helping you and it's making you do the right things, I'm all for it. I'm just leery of the fact that if anything goes wrong, like we know one of the sites that went down was early last year and people do business on this site, that mm -hmm. and their sister site, it went down. So your business shut down. Like I said about that pen and paper, never crash. So, <laughs> you know, if you want to use this thing to track some things or maybe just track how you spend, that's fine. But I don't want all my stuff in digital so it can be lost in digital space either. Exactly. Because the next hurricane that comes, I want to be able to grab me some cash and get out. <laughs> Exactly, exactly, exactly. And so then when that comes to, and I said, you know, the financial piece of mm -hmm. all of this, the inflation that we are facing right now, one of the questions that Tiana had was about, you know, budgeting and saving during this inflation time. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that we can do so that it doesn't affect us as much? OK, so when I say this, it does to me, I think I said people think it's a broken record. But I always think about the ladies who were born before us that took care of eight children, 10 mm -hmm. children and lived in basically a two room house and everybody ate every night. They did mm -hmm. the simple things. They didn't have to stretch it all out. They didn't have all of these fancy things. And we still ate. I'm not one of eight, but I do understand my grandmother had eight children. Mm. They didn't go hungry. They ate. Maybe they didn't have the best of everything, but they had that. And it was the simple things that I still follow that she probably did. Mm -hmm. So how do you prepare mm -hmm. for that? I've been saying it all along. S-A-V-E. Save. When you make it automatic and you start, you don't touch it. If you have to put this savings at a different location from where you normally bank, that's the best thing for you because now you can't go run and dip into it. And what I also share with people is that when you open this account, do not get or take the debit. debit I, that's, I just wrote it down. <laughs> or ATM card. Yes. I remember when I did that years ago and they, um, they I said, no, I don't want that. She, she looked at me like if I was crazy. Yeah, I mean that because this is not for that. Now, you can have a savings account where you can dip into and get your nails done or do whatever. But when I'm talking about my life, you want to take my job away and I have nothing to fall back on. That's not an option for Michelle. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to help other people do that same thing. Just start. You don't have to ask me when you get paid this week, Thursday or Friday or next week, Thursday or Friday. Say, I heard what you said and I went to the bank and I put my fifty dollars in there. Wow. And you never fail. And to better and to make that better for you, go automatic because banks talk to each other. You can use, I think it's the ACH transfer mm -hmm. and set up the, the transfer from this bank to this bank. And trust me, there is there should not be a fee. If it is, go find the bank that's not charging you a fee. 
mm-hmm. and get that done. And then you keep that rolling. You won't see it. It won't bother you. You won't think about, oh, well, I should not put it in this week because, you know, the girls are going out for drinks after work. Buy that liquor, excuse the expression, y'all, I'm sorry, and go home. <laughs> Say so don't go, don't go to the club, don't go to the bar, go home. <laughs> go home. And I'm not putting any business down. Let's be clear. I want people to understand it's okay to enjoy yourself, but if you're not able to in this space at this time, it's okay. There's plenty of things I passed up on. I could mm-hmm. tell you about that car I had for 16 years. I passed up on not having the new shiny thing. So now the new shiny thing I do have is paid for. All right. That's what I'm talking about. So, Michelle, you know, I was thinking as you're talking about savings, the big thing now is the yield that you get, the interest that you get off of those savings accounts. Um, Is there any particular savings account that we need to be looking at that you want to recommend or how would you go about that? So, and it's funny, I was just reading about that today. You can go with the high yield accounts that are online. If that money is going to be used for the purpose of you saving for the future, I would say yes, do that okay. because then you mm-hmm. really can't touch it. Because by the time you try to get that money from offline, they got to close your account, then hope send you a check, and hopefully it'll get mailed to you in some time. But if you have it at a brick and mortar, you can easily go get it. So definitely Mm -hmm. do that. In the regular brick and mortars, as we know, interest rates are very low. You're not going to get much on that. So that's why I would say keep your little money that you're going to go in and get. I'm going to get my nails and I'm going to do this, that little money for that. But the Mm -hmm. money you're saving for the future, for goals, put away in a location like that. And if you can't do that, if you're not online savvy, you don't want to do that, you can go to a credit union or a bank that has CD products where you can still save. But Mm -hmm. it's going to be locked for a certain amount of time, which is a good thing because you don't Mm -hmm. need to touch it, but you earn more money because Mm -hmm. they're holding it for six months, a year, two years, five years. That adds up. That interest and it's compounded either daily, you know, sometimes it's quarterly. However, it's compounded. It's still going to be more than 0.01%. That's right. That's right. Well, Michelle, listen, um, I want to get to you because I want to ask you about your financial workshops this year. Um, Do you have any financial workshops? And if so, how can viewers register for your workshops? Those have just been missed. I've worked with a real estate broker this year. We just finished up. We did the first Saturday and the second Saturday, which was last one, to do to get people ready for that for for this year, because that was a, a, a an important thing for her, you know, to be prepared for financial, um, you know, hard times or emergency time. We just finished them. So mm-hmm. we're talking about doing more this year, but we haven't had the conversation yet. We need to get together and have that meeting. And I'll definitely want to share that out. But yep, I just finished those. We talked about credit and helping people with the spending plans and debt management. And that's a key thing that people don't realize how to really manage. They just keep swiping. They just keep moving. But there Mm -hmm. is something you can be doing to help manage that debt. So, yep, we just had that workshop. Okay. And so as far as your show is concerned, tell us about when your YouTube on YouTube channel, when your show comes on and how people can view your show. Well, the videos are not live, so I put the videos out there, posted. They're usually on Tuesday. So as of last year, I had to cut back to doing one a month than the others that I was doing. So the videos are out there for everyone to view. I even created a playlist. So if you want this specific topic or you're looking for a specific thing, that these videos would probably help you achieve that goal. Because not everyone has a credit issue, you know? That's right. Not everyone has a budgeting issue. So you can visit those without having to sift through everything of all of the videos. So this month is not out yet, but it will it will be shortly. But everything out there from past years will answer so many questions. I talk about reading the fine print. That's what we don't do. And then we wonder why we do have those overdraft fees or bank fees at banks. We didn't read that fine print. That's right. That's right. And so what's next for AJ Financial, AJM Financial? What's next, Michelle? I think there's going to be some changes. And I say that because it's still a little pondering, you know, sometimes you need to reboot and refresh. So, you know, after many years of um, uh, having this and then, you know, just through the pandemic and making those changes that we all needed to make in some way, shape Mm -hmm. or fashion or form, you know, that's what I'm looking at for 2023. So there'll be some things on the horizon and I'll be sure to update you on those. And if people want to get in touch with you, what do they need to do? They can visit AJMFinancial.com. That's my website. And the, the contact 
uh, page comes directly to me. I want to, you know, be specific about that. It doesn't go to some, you know, mailbox that's not monitored or just no one. It actually comes to me. So feel free to state what you're looking for. You know, uh, I need this help, or blah, blah, blah. And that will be fine. And you can also visit the YouTube channel. You can get information there and you can still click in the description. I usually have my uh, uh, same the website there as well. And people can contact me and all my contact information is out there. Wow. You know, Michelle, it's always great to have you on the show. And so three words that describe you. Ooh, oh, my God. <laughs> For this year, you know, this is a new year. I know. I know. I'm trying to think of what I've heard back to me. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember this uh, said a few times, consistent. A person who knew me for a long time, she said, one thing I can say about you is you're consistent. So me, this is what you, what you see is what you get. This is me. Um, I am actually a little stubborn. Let me, let me say that. Yeah, I can be very stubborn. I could put, I could dig my heels in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to go with passionate. I'm, I'm really passionate about the things that I'm passionate about, yeah. you know, and as you can tell, it's about this finance. I want us to really succeed. That's right. Well, Michelle, listen, you know, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. And of course, I think we're going to do this a little more. We're going to have quarterly. Um, and you and I will talk about that as we look at schedules and have you come on so that people who are looking will be able to say, oh, what you told me back in January, now I'm doing it in March, April. And so I'd like to have you come back on. And again, thank you so much. And I wish you all the best that God has for you. Yes, and you then thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Tim, if I could leave you and with everyone with this one thought, when mm -hmm. people say they can't save or don't want to save, I don't know anybody who regrets not saving. All right. Send that to me. And anybody that wants to get in touch with you again, Tiana, please show that email address so that they can go there and contact Michelle. And of course, if you want to go to her LinkedIn page, yes. um, and all, you know, our YouTube yeah. channel and make sure that you ask her any questions that you probably were not able to to get through here in the chat. So, Michelle, again, thank you for joining the show and may God continue to bless you and thank your mom. You. Yes. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Tammy Washington. Thank you. Thank Yay. you for joining the show. Pamela yeah. Powell. Those are girls from Charleston, South Carolina. Yes. Of course, they live in New York and all that now. But anyway, oh. yeah. <laughs> thank you all for joining the show. All right, Michelle, I take care of yourself and thank you again. And um, I'm going to thank the viewers. We're going we're gonna to head on out of here. All right. And it's been a great show. Thank you, yes, Michelle. Thank you so much, Tim. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Listen, thank you, viewers, for always tuning into the show. And thank you for joining us this week as we continue our new beginning series with Dr. Melody McLeod, OBGYN and author. When I tell you she's coming on and she's got something next week to talk with us about, you're going to be excited about that. Thank you, producer Alicia, assistant producers Tiana, Willie, and Felicia. You've been holding it down since I had this COVID. I want you to remember, please subscribe to the Tammy TV Show YouTube channel. You hit that subscribe button. Right, Willie? That's the red button. You hit that subscribe, like, and it'll tell you everything. Willie, I can't do it like you, but it'll give you the schedule and it'll make it'll tell you when the show comes on. So if you do that, remember, let's be a blessing to somebody today and every day. I cannot stress that enough. And also, I want you to stay safe. But remember, I'm wearing my mask. OK, I've been through it. I'm going to social distance. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm still going to do it. Listen, I had COVID and this was the third year I dodged a bullet. But I want you to understand that it's still alive and well, whether it's a show. Thank you, Joyce, for joining the show as well. Listen, it's still alive and well. And so I want you to be careful. So just do what you need to do. Be careful. All right. Thank you for joining the show. And until the next time, take care of yourself. Be safe, all right? Love you. Bye-bye.